YouTube War Dog message over. Welcome back, guys, girls, and everybody else to part two of our Crusader Kings 3 campaign as the Bromhead Dynasty. It is the 10th of July, 870 AD. Halfdan Whiteshirt has taken over the north of England, and his brother, Ivar the Boneless, is still technically invading, although after the recent Battle of Stamford, we are sending both of the brothers packing off north uh, thanks to the help of the armies of Wessex and Mercia and East Anglia and whoever that other one is. Who is that other one? I don't know who that is. The Duchy of Cantabria. I have no idea why they are even involved, but they've apparent they apparently helped. Um, what we're going to do here is we're just going to keep rolling on. We are, of course, still Earl Thomas of Lindsay, who is now 35 years old. We're saying speaks rudimentary Saxon and has begun learning Norse. The invading Norsemen are retreating north. And we have an event. More than anything, my quest to be a learned man is teaching me how much I do not yet know. What more, there must be so much knowledge that has been lost to the ages, as books fall apart or languages are forgotten. Perhaps I could contribute by making a new translation of one of the classic works. Although, what would I even translate? Um, we're gonna say for now, because we're still relatively new to this medieval world, don't forget that we are, of course, myself, if I'd been thrown back through time, so we are a modern day human. Um, so we're just going to say this sounds too hard for now. We are also in the middle of a war to defend England. Uh, we're going to disband our troops. And we'll keep waiting and seeing. Oh, they are coming back. Our allies are to the south of us and look like they may intend to meet the enemy already. Lindsay is under siege though, so we will not let it uh, go undefended by its liege. Interesting manoeuvres here from the Norsemen. They're committed to Lincoln, so I'm going to go up there and try and catch them. We have successfully caught 1,200 of them and held them long enough for our allies to arrive. Uh, Beortric was slain by Earl Einar. However, one of our soldiers has managed to wound Earl Einar, and the Battle of Lincoln ends in victory for the Saxon forces. Now, I just want to take a quick nosy while we uh, keep going here. At how many of the special troops these guys have got left? He's got 2,000 left. And he's got 1,400 left, so they are still losing some. We're going to disband our troops once again. I think disbanding them encourages the enemy to come forward. Maybe. So we're going to raise up our troops and we are going to push into Lincoln because the Allies are on the way. We weren't quick enough to stop them. However, we have caught them up here now at the Battle of Grimsby. And once again, our allies are here. Alarico was wounded by Earl Ragnar. But the battle goes once again in favour of the Saxons. Mayor Friedmund wounded Earl Uber. No, was wounded by Earl Uber, but one of our soldiers has then wounded Earl Uber in return. Mayor Wifredo named Thane Stuhler. Alarico was slain by Earl Einar. I'm pretty sure he's one of the Cantabrians, probably. Or was. My councillor Kjolnuth died of old age. He was 81. 
We have a new bishop, Kierbert. And there is victory in the Battle of Grimsby. And once again, just going to check to see if they are... Yeah, he lost 600 of his special soldiers in that one. Uh, Ivar didn't lose any of his, but that's fine. We'll disband again, see if they come back. And we have a diplomatic proposal. Greetings, my amicable vassal. I would like to educate your young son and heir, Burgred Bromhead, personally, if that sounds reasonable to you. Is our son six already? No, he's one. Um, hmm. Well, I was intending to have my son um, become Anglo-Saxon so that my children don't have to live with the stigma of being the only English people in England. Uh, I'm not really sure if I want my liege to educate my son. We're going to decline for the time being. We're about to win the war against Ivar. There we are, 100%. <clears throat> However, I do want to look to see... He has had a daughter called Osper. Now, what I am going to do is propose that uh, Osper and my son... Burgred, uh become Oof. we're minus 19 is there anything I can do if I send him a gift of 150 gold that would be everything I've got right I think what we need to do then is I need to attempt to sway King Burgred uh, that would oh, that would abandon my scheme to learn Norse, though. Could I offer to uh, just change my contract upwards? You can't actually do it. Um, damn. Well, there's the uh, victory against Ivar, the boneless. So by the end of it, Halfdan has 1,400 of his um, unique soldiers, his event soldiers left, and Ivar has 1,400 as well. So he has 2,500 men total. And Halfdan has about the same amount of, of troops. Oops. Which is a lot less, or a lot more rather, than, uh, than the Saxons have down here in the south. So we're still at a major disadvantage. Unless we also... Well, you don't. Does Wessex get event troops? No, but they do have 1600... tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to I already pinned a couple of people I think Oswald wounded half Dan which is why I pinned him I'm gonna pin King Alfred of Wessex as well and then I am going to pin half Dan and Ivar just so I can quickly refer to everybody So, I think this is where the real challenge of, uh, of starting here begins. I have attempted to do something similar to this in the past, and uh, if you don't end up getting whooped in the first war, typically um, the risk is that 
Halfdan comes down and invades my counties because they're bordering him and he can conquer a county at a time anyway just because he's Norse. Or even that my liege demands my land or a combination of the two. Uh, we are about to gain a skill point. There we go. A new perk for the lifestyle tree. Scholarly circles. Learning per level of devotion. I don't think that's really going to make much of a difference for us. We're also going to go up to four speed since we're at peace right now. We gained 65 gold in additional taxes. Now. Uh, I think... I need extra, I think I need extra, well, okay, listen, I am playing as myself, right, and even if I'm not playing a game here, I do know the famous quote, the sinews of war are infinite money, so I think it's perfectly plausible that rather than focusing on barracks and military camps to up my levies, that I would see the value in uh, constructing something that will give us more tax. So we are going to construct crop fields in Lincoln. Okay. My liege has 1,600 men now. My wife is pregnant again. I would really, really like to uh, secure a marriage or a betrothal here. I can't afford to send a gift to my liege. You know what? I think swaying my liege is more important than learning Norse. We can always go back to learn Norse. Like there is a peasant uprising, but uh, half Dan's probably going to. Uh, Dan is no longer within diplomatic range. He is now left. A commoner of Anglo Saxon heritage has been accosted in the streets of Lincoln over some minor offence. By making a statement in their defence, I could perhaps convince my liege, Petty King Burgred, the equally Anglo Saxon, of my good character, but I might risk alienating my English peers. I have no English peers, so I don't really care. Did that actually increase his opinion of me already? I'm not entirely sure. The easy way to check is to uh, see if this is plausible. I think it did increase it. We'll see. Praise St. Bridget. Wolfrith has given birth to a perfect little son. Who will you become, my child, and what shall I call you? It's a good question, because I want to give them Saxon names. Um, let's call him Eckbert. Is that how that was spelt? Yes. My son, Eckbert. It does look like somehow the upland has taken one of the territories that uh, Halfdan did have. My son and heir, Burgred, is an unusually calm child. When the others play their wild games, Burgred often withdraws to some silent corner. He does not speak a lot, but I can tell he is always thinking about something. Okay, he's three, but he's become pensive. So that's either a stewardship or a learning education. 
if we want the best results. So we're really on a knife edge here. Um, there's no real way of knowing whether half Dan's going to come down, whether we're going to secure the right alliances. I'm trying not to be completely static. So we are trying to build some stuff um, to improve our income so we can maybe do more with money. <laughs> Why else would you improve your income? Uh, but I'm really, really hoping if we can secure an alliance with Burgrid that, uh, that we'll be able to have him help defend us if Halfdan does come for us because he's back up to 3,000 men now although that does include uh, his allies I think Burgrid gained 25 opinion of you okay he now has two daughters. She is wheezing, so maybe we should try and go for the younger of the two that isn't wheezing. He will now accept. Let's send a proposal to uh, to my liege. Greetings, my amicable vassal. I gladly accept your betrothal proposition. Your son and heir, Burgrid, will be betrothed to my daughter, Aethelswith. Signed, King Burgrid of Mercia. Lovely. Now, I do have a second son, so the other thing I want to do here is uh, keep an eye on Alfred to see if he ends up having a daughter. Oswald of East Anglia was slain in battle by Bottlefer. That's the guy that wounded Halfdan, so unfortunately we're just going to take him off the list. He was killed in battle uh, by a guy called Bottleforth. No idea where that battle took place. Halfdan is still having conflicts with his fellow Norsemen. He's back up to 3,000 men. His levies are massive. Just trying to keep an eye on Alfred. Looking for that second alliance. I mean, we could also maybe... Well, it looks like they've all married off. We could have gone for the uh, Principality of Gwynedd, but apparently not. And there's no sense in allying with other uh, earls under King Burgrid. You can unlock a new perk. Learn on the job. 20% of councillors' primary skills added to your own. That is going to be massive for us because, of course, we didn't have any base in any of our skills. We still have zero intrigue um, because we only gained an extra two from that. But uh, we're up to 13 learning, 7 stewardship, 3 martial and 5 diplomacy. That's wonderful. Uh, Dan has gone now, so I'm just going to uncheck him. He's, he's left us. Alfred's wife is imprisoned by Alfred himself. Probably because she's an adulterer. Oh. Hold on. Aethelred Burgridson of Mercia. She had a child with King Burgrid, Alfred's wife. Oh, dude, I don't see that boding well for uh, relations among the Saxons, although one could argue that uh, Queen Aelswith is uh, definitely promoting relations among the Saxons. Okay, we've built crops crop fields in Lindsay. 
what we really should do uh, beyond that is uh, look to get something else in here. Do we have in terms of men at arms? Light footmen and some onagers. I don't really see any reason why you would build pastoral lands over the other one. They improve reinforcement rate later on. What do these do? Mm, they don't improve reinforcement rate. Okay, I guess. Guess there's a reason there. Okay. We're still attempting to sway King Burgred here. We may as well keep trying to do that, keep trying to keep him on side, stay in his good books. Uh, we now have 150 gold. So let's get some pastoral lands, build some pastures. Once again, in Lincoln. We're going to focus on our primary holding as long as we can keep hold of it. I do at some point want to get, if I can, the county of West Riding. Because that's where I actually live. That's where I'm actually from. But uh, obviously that's going to require fighting half Dan White shirt, which is uh, not good. Gwynedd have actually managed to take over that uh, county of Westmoreland. Jorvik conquest of the earldom of Ulster. So Halfdan's gone over there now as well. Now I'm also playing with rules on where if there is land that's like detached from a primary area, the earldom of Lindsay gained focused recruitment for 10 years. Lovely. Uh, so if it's detached from the primary area, such as here or here, and it isn't linked by the sea, which these both are, but for example, I uh, know Sudriya is linked by the sea there as, or Suthriya, sorry. But if they're in, like, in the land, it, it's probably more of a big deal in Europe itself. Uh, when the ruler dies, they won't keep the land. The land will become independent. It will break away. Which probably isn't going to be a big deal on the British Isles because most counties touch the sea. But certainly for Leicestershire, Leicestershire, Northamptonshire, Warwickshire, Worcestershire, <laughs> that's, I do know how to say that, uh, they could well be, uh, you can designate a guardian for Burgred. Oh, he's seven. I've missed the beginning of the window. Okay, so learning, he's got a base of four. Stewardship, he's got a base of three. But he does have the holy site of Rome, which is helping him out. Um... I think we will say, let's find out who his best bet for a guardian is, because it's definitely not going to be me, because I want whoever it is to convert his uh, culture. I think either way it's going to be Ailfgar. He's got the highest in both. But he is a mastermind philosopher, diligent, impatient and trusting. He's not terrible. But uh, then again, on a role-play standard, do we know we can trust him? My wife is an adequate bargainer and she's better in stewardship. So I think what we'll do is, he's already at stewardship. We will ask our wife to educate Burgrid and convert his culture so that he becomes Saxon. Alfred's not going to have any other kids if uh, he keeps his wife locked up. Burgred is uh, having plenty, but there's no point in allying or marrying two of our kids off to him. Desperately looking for another alliance that will help to shield us here. There is King Cousentin II Mackinade up in Alba. 
He has 2,000 men. He has a two-year-old daughter. Oh dear, she's sickly and a child of a concubine. I don't know if we really want to do that. We can unlock another perk. We will, of course, go for sanctioned loopholes. And by now, we've been here for 10 years. So I think at this point, even though we are still culturally English, I think it's safe to say that we can now speak fluent Saxon. Um, we probably speak Saxon just as well as any Saxon does. But we are still culturally, fundamentally English. Where are you going? Oh, uh, excuse you. 2,000 raiders coming in. We only have 600 men to try and fend them off with. He's got four champions. They are likely far better than my knights. Yeah, my best is a prowess of 10. I don't think there's much we can do about this. In our recent communication, my liege petty king Burgrid expressed a want to focus on his ambitions and interests more. I could make sure that our coming letters contain more on a topic close to his heart. He is a naive appeaser. I think he likes to focus on diplomatic matters. Um, the ruling of a realm surely interests him. I'll take a gamble and go with his education, but uh, I don't really know. In his response, my liege, King Burgred, encouraged my slight dip into more personal topics. Now I just have to keep pretending that I know anything about diplomacy. Let us speak more. Wonderful. Uh, oh good, Halfdan's raiding us as well now. My son Ekbert was captured by Jarl Van. No, 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 please, no. Please, please give me my child back. Um, for 10 gold. I mean, that's pretty cheap to get my son back, so we'll immediately pay a ransom there. To the amicable Thomas, I accept your ransom offer. Egbert Bromhead shall be returned to you forthwith. Signed, Jarl Vane of Smulland. A good deal. Yes, a very good deal. There's nothing I can do about these raiding forces. They're too big. So we're just going to have to let them raid us and, and run. When is Egbert's birthday? The 13th of September. Actually, what is he? He is a bossy child. So bossy's going to be marshal or stewardship. So, because we recently got sacked, we uh, we actually gain popular opinion because we were sacked. Ah, there we go. Recently looted. Holding taxes minus 50%. Development growth is down. Building construction time is up. Aha! It's past the 13th of September. So, it's time to give uh, Egbert an education. The holy site of Rome improves his stewardship above his marshal, so let's get him educated and once again we're going to ask our wife to educate him and teach him to be a good proper Saxon. And I think with that 
I'm just watching the date. I would like to get it to the 1st of January. But I do think with that that we will call it uh, the end of the second video there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do comment, like and subscribe if you have enjoyed. Um, we are still definitely on a knife's edge here. Um, we're trying to secure alliances. We've managed to secure an alliance with our liege. So hopefully if we get into a war where somebody attacks us specifically, we can still call him in. I think that's how it works. I'm never 100% sure with Crusader Kings 3. I'm not an expert at the game by any stretch. Um, and hopefully at some point, Alfred will figure his stuff out and either free his wife or get a concubine or get a divorce or something and have a daughter. Or maybe we'll have a daughter and we can betroth her to uh, his son, Aethelwulf. Um, but that's definitely going to do it for the second episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on part three. That's going to do it for now. I'll see you soon. But for the time being, it's going to be Wardog out.